Da -da. I mean, that's like, a, I mean, this is a long way away, for sure, but that's kind of like why I'm looking at, or we're looking at, like, not necessarily like alternative school models, but just like, I, I never really examined the options that were out there. Like, I think there's other good things about the public school system, like you get socialized, and you get introduced to people from like a wide variety of backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, but I'm also like, you know, I'm like, I think we could do better. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to homeschool our daughter, but you know, I, I, there's gotta be some other options, at least worth considering either that or like, you know, public school and then like a no fun life outside of it where you go to like, you know, Kuman or something afterwards. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Montessori until 8th grade is is pretty cool. I have to admit, I don't really know what Montessori is. I think I, I have that, like, baked in sort of like, ah, the public school system's good enough for me. Like, well, if you gave people the ability to choose what they wanted to study, they would just, uh, you know, study going to sleep or something like that. But I think that that is, uh... I think that that's probably just an ignorant way of thinking about it. Is self... I, I imagine it's self-directed, but in my head, I'm not like, you know, the, the teacher doesn't go like, Okay, Billy, what do you want to learn today? Fortnite again? Alright, go ahead. Like, I imagine that there's like some unique skills as an educator you kind of... Um, you have to have to be an effective Montessori instructor. I went to a Montessori school and came out wanting to learn long division. See, that's why you can't let kids choose what they want to learn, because they'll choose something impractical like long division. Rip, rip that save. You're not wrong. Rip that save. Long division is, is mighty useless. Like, I, and, you know, division, that's important. But long division? Come on. Multiplication. Very helpful. You know, you, you want to figure out... Multiplication is most important for figuring out what percentage of, like, a number another number is. Like, you know, you want to... You want to figure out what, like, a 15% tip is? Then you just multiply your bill by 1.15. That's, that's valuable. Division? That's division. Well, it depends on how you do it, you know. I mean, division and multiplication are the, the same operation, just in reverse, right? Hold on. Excuse me, I, I, I believe that I said 15%. And then I said 1.15. Don't, don't be needlessly obtuse. This isn't a Montessori school, okay? I, I, choose, the, I choose the curriculum here. I do it, like, I feel for kids right now. Like, I feel for college students, like, a, a distance college almost makes, like, no sense to me. Um, as somebody who took a couple of correspondence classes when I was in my senior year of university. <laughs> it's a little different now, though. Hold on, hold on. But, like, I can't even imagine being in, like, distance learning, like, first grade. Like, that's, that's nuts, man. Okay, get ready. Not now. Not now. Is there... So there's no safety here. Is there safety slightly beyond this rock? No. I think you just gotta make it in one go. Bro, that's bad. That's not good. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's alright, it's gonna take some time. Yeah, that's oh, okay. Well, you look, I was glancing. I'll just admit I was glancing. If you're gonna die, this is where you want to do it anyway. Um, 
But yeah, like, I mean, so much of your early education, like, when I think back to first grade, like, what did we learn in first grade? We did a lot of reading, don't get me wrong. Maybe learn, like, extremely basic mathematics, like, adding together two single-digit numbers. Then apart from that, there was a lot of just, like, hey, just, like, you know, I don't know, draw, like, a, a picture and don't punch anybody at the table in the face. Like, there's... It takes hundreds or thousands of hours of, of being immersed in those kind of environments to to treat people the way they want to be treated. <laughs> I think kids, you know, they a lot of them nat, uh, lack a, a certain natural empathy, you know? You gotta, you gotta condition it in there. Like, even my baby, she's constantly, like, cramping her pants. And I'm like, you know, somebody has to clean that. And then she just giggles, like, ignorant, just ignorant. Okay, you know what? We'll start again. That's fine. The save was still there, huh? Insubordinate and churlish. I will say, I mean, here's how you can tell, like, that school has a lot of wasted time the way it's currently structured, all right? I turned out okay. I, by my standards, at least. I, I can pretend to be intelligent, at least, because of my vocabulary. Which is, uh, honestly, for like 95% of society is, is an aspirational goal, right? But, in second grade, 50% of our curriculum was cursive writing. If you can waste literally half of your education at, at such a formative age and still suffer, you know, almost no consequences. I think there's there's room for optimization there, is all I'm trying to say. They have gotten rid of that. That's good. I remember my grandma being like, I can't believe they don't teach people how to write shorthand anymore. <laughs> Even in like 1997, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? She opened up like her shorthand journal, and it was just a bunch of like weird symbols and stuff like that. I'm like, jeez. You, were you like a, were you a code talker? I don't understand. What is shorthand? It's like a way to, to handwrite super fast. So you would, instead of drawing like, um, or instead of writing out some words, you know, you would just put like, you'd have symbols that uh, represent like common suffixes at the end or whatever. Please air strafe me back. You get fished. Get fished, dummy. Get fished. Stenographers use that? Look, okay, and I don't think we have any court stenographers here because this would be pretty unprofessional to like have this up on your second monitor. But I don't understand the role of a court stenographer. Like, couldn't you accomplish... Couldn't you actually, like, do better than a court stenographer with a, a $50 microphone and a $90 Logitech C920 webcam pointed at the... At the, the plaintiff and the defendant? <laughs> Someone has to write down what's said? But, but why? Make it searchable? Okay, you know, that's actually... That's fair, because the, the the YouTube automatic closed captions are not gonna, they're not good enough <laughs> for that. <laughs> that makes sense, okay. This seems like kind of an old-timey profession is all I'm saying. I, clearly there's parts of it I don't understand. But I'm like, it, it's kind of a, you know, you're like, Hey, what do you do? You're like, okay, I'm the lawyer. What do you do? I'm the judge. What do you do? Oh, I got nothing to do, so I just decided to come watch a trial today. How about you? Oh, I'm the only person on earth who can type. Yeah, maybe in like 1940. Nowadays, it seems like a job you could just have like, like someone's, uh, like 10 year old kid do. Excuse me, Jimmy, could we get that, could we get that part stricken from the record? And then Jimmy's going. He's doing orange justice. Sorry, sorry. I know they type fast. I'm just saying. You know, you, like my grandma could write fast. Nobody's hiring her to, you know, take down the minutes at a, you know, McDonald's board meeting or something. 
I remember, I've, and I've told this story ten times before, but I remember one of one of the only memories I have uh, from like second grade era is uh, we were learning cursive writing. So you know, you would they'd be like, "Here's how you make a T in cursive writing," and it's like a loop, and then you put a line through it, right? It's like a tall little loop, then you put a line through it. Um, kind of looks like a Wobbuffet with his arms crossed, uh, and then. We, we had homework that was like, write three lines of T's. Oh my god, get fished. Write three lines of T's. So, you know, I, I did it. Came in the next day, the teacher was like... I, I remember the girl's name, but I'm not gonna say it. Let's just pretend her name was like Erica. They were like, Erica, can you come up here, please? And then she took Erica's workbook. And instead of making individual T's, Erica made all the loops on a line, and then use the ruler to cross them all out at once. Oh, snap. Not okay. And the teacher made a freaking example out of her. It was like Miss Trunchbull. She didn't throw her in the chokey or anything, but... I'm like, yeah, if I, if I was like, if I worked for a company that, that needed free thinkers or something like that, I'd be like, I gotta, I gotta find Erica and, and offer her a job. That's, that's creative thinking. That's efficiency. Yeah, I don't know, it's it's so stupid, like, the whole point of cursive writing is to write as fast as possible. And then she did it. And then you're like, oh, not like that. They would always, it, it was even worse than, like, the no calculator example. Where, like, oh, you're never gonna have calculators in real life. You know, so we can't give you calculators. Um, for the test. Because uh, at least, like, they couldn't have predicted the, the right... I mean, it was kind of a lie, because calculators are relatively cheap and ubiquitous to begin with, but, uh, you know, they couldn't predict the rise of smartphones, you know? I, I can't blame my 7th grade teacher or 2nd grade teacher in rural Ontario for not knowing that Steve Jobs was going to, you know, revolutionize handheld computing. Um, but with cursive writing, they would always just lie to you. And once you go through it, you realize it's a freaking, it's, it's a, an egregious lie. They're like, oh, when you get to university, the professors are no nonsense. They talk so fast, the only way for you to be able to take notes down is to do cursive writing. If you try to print, you'll never keep up. Meanwhile, the professors, you know, were like, oh yeah, um, it kind of like snowed today and I live in the woods, so class is canceled. You just, you know, the lecture notes are online. Let's go. You're gonna... And even, like, my teachers were, like, they would brag about their own college experience. They'd say, like, ridiculous stuff, man. I had to develop my own personal style of cursive writing and printing just to be able to keep up with my teachers. Like, really? Honestly, it doesn't seem like life was that hard back then. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, you know what? I'm throwing this out here, too. They'd make outrageous claims like they invented the question mark. If only they knew, yeah. If only they knew. I had a teacher last semester who forced us to write in cursive, and I've never even learned cursive. Okay, um, let's, let's start unpacking this. A, a professor, so this is in college. Were you taking, and this is an honest question, are you taking like handwriting? Like is, the, is that still a major? Or like stenography or something like that? That or But like shorthand, right? Like, I can't imagine forcing you to write in cursive. Not to mention that like it's not just the cursive, I'm like, you couldn't even type? It was a military history course? Don't tell your professor this, because it seems like tradition might be important at that institution. It's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my entire life. And honestly, if if military doctrine um, followed that kind of rigorous uh, traditionalism, you know, we would we would still be wearing you know blue uniforms into combat and you know riding in on horses, getting mown down by machine guns in the Ardennes. You can tell him I said that. True. Thank you. I, pre I appreciate that. I didn't. I kind of came just off the top of my head, but 
I'll let him know. Thank you. Don't fall, you you, you scumbag. Don't fall. Just moonwalk out of here. Mmm, saved. In military history, it's necessary to read sources. Yeah, but you don't- Oh, frick. Air strafe. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't need to read Caesar's handwritten account of of his conquest of, like, Cisalp and Gaul, you know? Like, you could read the- Who- you could read the, the typed copy, you know? You don't have to actually pull out the, the originals. Okay. Okay. I can't believe we made it there. That was, that was spicy. You know what's great about this game? Is that you get to... Let's go. Um, you, you get to... You have a fresh start every time you get to a new area. Like, we, we were a little sloppy down there. Who cares? You know what they call, uh... The doctor who got C-plus in med school? Doctor. <laughs> Sorry. Does, that's not even how the joke works, but... Um... We tried, we tried. How do you feel about standardized tests? I, look, I only took like a few of them in my whole uh, career in, in school, if you want to call it that. More of a passion project. Um, so, and I, I think to some extent Canada doesn't have the same reliance on uh, standardized tests as America. Like, you, your future is not, unless you want to go to an American university, your, your future isn't really determined by like how you do on the ACT or, or the SAT or anything like that. Um, but yeah, in, in Ontario, you take like a, a ninth grade standardized test uh, for mathematics. And then you take a 10th grade test basically to see if you're literate. Um, like what your literacy and, and reading comprehension is like. But it, it doesn't sort you into barrels. Really. Mostly, like, but taking some of the more advanced, uh, standardized tests, it, especially in, like, uh, like, 11th grade, 12th grade, was, was kind of my first introduction, I guess, to being, like, a... Re realizing that, like, my school was not real life. You know, you would get, like, one of the highest scores in your school on, on one of those standardized tests. I'm going back for that save, man. And then you would be like, congratulations, you got the highest mark in, in the school on the chemistry standardized test. And then you're like, wow, that's awesome. And then you, you open up the results and you're like at bottom, you know, 5% in the province. And you're like, man, this is, I am not in like a good high school. Hmm. Not yet. Not yet. I don't like this one. I like that one. I don't like this one. I'm, I like this one. <laughs> Saved. Okay. I still don't even know how you how you make it out of here. I was top two percent for a grade eight Gauss math test. That's incredible. That's unbelievable. On some of those tests, like I, Malf and I took one in in eleventh or twelfth grade for math. And there were only like four people in our class that took it. Right. Like we were at the. Uh, we were at the peak of, of, of mathematical prowess for our high school. Um, there were questions on the test that I was like, I don't even know the first thing about how to answer it. And then some of the kids were getting like, you know, <laughs> getting like 93% or something. I still, I, I, just tell me what to do, please. <clears throat> just go. Just don't get hit. Someone said after the barrel, there's a safe spot on the left. Stick to the edge away from the rock. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you're absolutely right. The rock won't hit you if you believe. Okay. 
That's that's the first needle moving of the day. This one it kind of feels like you just gotta wing it. Skull. Yep. Skull. Okay. I was just gonna say, am I crazy to think you ride this son of a gun up there and then platform across? All right, we get another chance at it. We learned something. We learned something there. That, that was big. There's a lot of progress to be made there. Yahoo. Okay. Good learning. Good learning. Let's go. Safe. Safe. This one, you just got to wing it. You got it. You got it. I'm stuck. I can't move. I had the Reg doll. This one, you just gotta wing it. Not yet. I knew it was coming too! Tell Cersei! Okay, you know what? That's, that's good though. We learned something there. We learned something. Imagine Gaming. I'm embarrassed that I retweeted my own tweet about Imagine Gaming, but I still think to this day it has not gotten the attention it deserved. I'm gonna- I'm gonna schedule, uh, a, another retweet of that for, like, the next time there's a live E3. I- I genuinely think that tweet could do 10,000 likes. And then I could sell it. Imagine... Gaming. Bro. Um... I lived? Made it, made it. I'll pay you ten bucks to retweet it tomorrow? Now we're talking. Getting getting paid to retweet my own tweets. That's the dream. You should post it every Wednesday, but it has no day in it. It has it's got no words on it. You are absolutely right, by the way. Tomorrow is We Shop Wednesday. Very excited by that prospect. Always love We Shop Wednesday. Can I tell you? I, I loved Rivals last Tuesday, but I'm also loving the fact it's a more casual stream today. You know, instead of playing like six hours of brain melting chess, you know, if I just end up uh, playing some brain melting Alt F4, that's fine. This is casual for me. Hi, yo! All right, Toasty. You, you, I I always like to answer Toasty's uh, questions because I feel like they hint at the possible themes of a future edited compilation, and then you can use this as like a capstone, like a snapshot of of, of what people are feeling in uh, in 2021. It, it was what's the most recent technological advancement that is. Uh, that's affected society the most, is that correct? Just give it a sec. I'm just waiting for it. The most explosive advancement? Which one is coolest? The coolest explosive technological advancement. Help. Um, not tech. Okay, not not tech. All right. What's the, <laughs> the the steam engine? I don't understand. I, the the coolest societal advancement. What's the most explosive technology? Are you are you actually looking for like nitroglycerin? What about those bladeless fans? Those are pretty cool. I have no idea. I, I'm just gonna be honest, I don't know what you're asking me. Bath bombs, there you go, Jay. Jay, get out of here. You're not welcome. Ever since you took the merch hostage, 
You're not welcome here, Jay. Also, thanks for the marketing hook, but... Like, for kayfabe, you're not welcome here. Which explosive is coolest? Oh, that's easy enough. Diacoca Mentos. Can you imagine? Do you think... Do you guys know that lady on TikTok? And, like... TikTok is a lot, like, old YouTube. Where people would just do silly things and then get famous and then, like, try to turn it into a career. I know, you know, pot calling the kettle black, etc., etc. But, like, there's this lady on TikTok. Um, and, like, she got famous because, like, she would record these videos and it would be like, you know... Diet Coke and Mentos! And then she would just pour a whole thing of Mentos into Diet Coke and it would explode in her face. And she'd try to drink it and go like... Bleh, bleh. I, Dan linked me to a TikTok of hers like a month ago. And I, I just like, there's like a, a, a movie to be made in there. Like... I... She, she got famous for doing that. And now she does that two times a day for the rest of her life. Like that's her job is to like... Live. That's her job is to basically like... Cause soda explosions and then like I assume clean your living room and then you know take a quick little lunch break and then do it again it's weird man like like what I do is weird enough I can't imagine like like I go through like I wouldn't call it psychological dilemmas or whatever but there are days where I'm like what I the service I provide the planet earth is meaningless but it, at least I'm not... Like, I, I don't think I could get a, motivate myself to get out of bed in the morning. If if my job was just like, oh, okay, well, today I've got a sponsored uh, Sprite Zero Remix Soda Explosion TikTok to make. I think I'd rather, like, make license plates or something. I don't know, man. I think it's like I I want to like interview her. I don't want to interview her about like, you know, hey, what's the what's the craziest soda prank you've ever done? Just between you and me. I want to interview her and be like, you ever have days where you just wake up and go like, what the hell's the point? Cuz like no offense, but if I did your job, I think that would be something that I struggle with. Like that's the kind of interview I want to <laughs> make. But I don't know if everybody in society is burdened by that. Like, I feel like a lot of people go, you know, they have, like, questions like that that, that pop into their mind. But I also feel like there's a lot of people that are, like, blissfully ignorant. And they're like, I'm just gonna knock this out in four hours and then enjoy the rest of my day. But I hope she is one of those people that is burdened. Just because I think it would make a sick interview. Like, I, I feel like there, we might be kindred spirits in a way. Don't kill me, dude. You bring up some valid points. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> No, I mean, I hope, I, I don't mean I hope she's burdened so that she deals with the trauma. I mean, like, I hope she's burdened so that, like, you know, if we ever had a conversation, we could, you know, tease out some, some meaningful, you know, philosophy from one another. Because, like I said, I think, you know, we occupy a similar role in society as kind of like a, you know, a, a, a digital court jester. I would think... Sometimes, I've had these conversations with other streamers in the past, for sure. Like, sometimes I talk to other streamers and I'm like... I, I'll drop something like, You ever think it's weird that, like, you know... A big chunk of your job is just, like, being a clown for people online? And some people are like, yeah, it bothers me all the time. And I'm like, we're best friends. And then some people are like, I never really thought about it like that, but I suppose, like, that's kind of on pog. And I'm like, okay, it was nice to meet you. I don't think that we have any anything else to glean from one another. The Hadalis, thank you for the gifted subs, by the way. <laughs> Much appreciated. Okay, here you go. Here you go.
No, I'm not like uh, unfulfilled. It's just a, it's just a weird job. I mean, like 95% of jobs on the planet are not like, you know, saving orphans from burning buildings. I think they all kind of good. Like, I'm sure if you're an accountant, you have days, you know, where you're like, what the heck am I even doing? Just like moving stuff from, you know, from arrears to debits. It's just like a natural, I think it's a natural question to have, you know? As human beings have gone from like essentially being like predominantly farmers and hunters to like predominantly customer service representatives. <laughs> I think it's a, a natural question that kind of comes up for sure. I'm in the same boat. I'm like, I, I, I think streaming is kind of like a customer service job. Like... Most most of your, you know, entertainment is an important part of it, and then another part of it is, like, if people get mad at you, go in, like, you know. Oh, we're very sorry for the pain that we may have caused you via our, you know, the services we're trying to provide. Tell me more. There you go. My job is 100% like the guy from Office Space. I'm a glorified fact checker. I take the specs from the client to the engineer. Why can't the engineers just take the spec from the client themselves? I'm a people person. The engineers are not people. <laughs> Eddie. It's a great movie. Do, 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 do. What movie is that from? That's that's from Office Space. That being said, I will say, when it, and this is not really what the course was billed as, but in order to uh, in order to graduate from the the software development program I was in, you do have to take a course that is like it's called project management, but the actual like meat and potatoes of the class were like learning to. Uh, actually, like, not interrupt people in meetings is what I would describe it as. Like, the number of times that, like, we'd, we'd get, like, um, uh, like, thought experiments. Like, the, and the professor was really good, but, I mean, the class was, was very boring if you've had to work with other people before to begin with and kind of, like, I don't know, at least know how to pretend to treat them with respect if, if not outwardly treat them with real respect. Um, but, uh, they'd ask a question, like, your your company is losing a lot of money, and you think there's a chance for optimization. Uh, someone from HR thinks that the best way to optimize would be to like you know do something, and there would genuinely be people in the class that were like, tell her her idea is bad openly, uh, because the longer this meeting goes on, the more time that we would waste. And I'm like, geez, man, like. <laughs> You're not wrong, but like, I mean, I thought her idea was pretty stupid too, but you gotta put some sauce on it in the workplace. You gotta be like, well, as the person, you know, really down in the bowels of the system, here's what I think. And then when they say something asinine, you've gotta be like, well, that could be true, but at the same time, restate my own idea, but pose a rhetorical question. Wouldn't it be, I just think it could get two birds stoned at once, if maybe we took the philosophy behind your idea, but instead used my idea instead. And then people are like, yeah, yeah. Have some balls. Depending on where you're at in the company though, you don't get like paid to have balls, you know? You know, if you're like the, if you got skin in the game, if you're the CEO or something, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta nut up. If you just like, you know, you're a, a hired gun. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time, you know? Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, if you're, you're not getting paid to 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 make enemies, you know what I mean? If you're if you're in management or something like that, you're going to have to hurt some people's feelings. That's why, you know, one of the reasons in theory you get paid the big bucks.
HR, you need a little sauce. I still am so resentful of the... Like, the, the company that I worked at where I took a late lunch break and then they sent an email to the entire company being like, Hey, just so you know, lunch breaks are not allowed to be taken anytime except for in the 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. corridor. And I was like... Like, I, 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 it wasn't gonna be like a long-term career to begin with, but I lost so much respect for HR when I was like, or f basically for the, the one person who made up the entire HR, HR department, when I was like, you know, you really like, rather than just have a conversation with me and be like, you know, you, it, it would be better for everybody if you took lunch at a normal time, because then we could do meetings more efficiently. They were like, you know, hey, all like 200 people that work there, uh, just so you know, <laughs> we've noticed that some people, I, everybody knows who it is, by the way, uh, have been taking lunches at illegal times. We're just going to remind you that as per page 735 um, with the, uh, in the Code of Conduct in the Employee Handbook, you were mandated to read. That, that's not allowed. The, the, the acceptable lunch times are between 11 and 1, etc., etc. Toby. <laughs> yeah, but I'm like, I feel like Toby would have would have pulled Jim aside and been like, you know, hey Jim, you, it would really help us all out if you took lunch, you know, at a at a requisite lunch hour. 